here. And then I'll go into soapbox mode because I'm going to talk for a sec. I, the format's been rough on me so far. After all this sealed, my prediction was this was going to be a, a format favorite of highly skilled players because there's so much grindy stuff going on that it's going to favor better decision makers, give the better decision makers many, many, many more important decisions to make, and it's going to favor them. But And we also identified it as a princely format, but I wasn't... I think I may have underestimated even just how princely it is and what the impact of grindy plus, plus princely really means. Uh, I don't know if any, like, I'm curious if anybody has seen or had success with aggro so far. I've not even run into it in draft and I have not been compelled to draft it, but I'm wondering if there's aggro. Uh, so that's a thing on my mind right now because if we're in a grindy princely world, I, we could be a, like I might not like this format because it ends up being about who has the superior inevitability, who has the superior bomb. Yeah, I should. Uh, I'll cover Princely in a second. Um, so if it's about making it to your bombs and then having your bombs be better than than the other players, that's really going to take a lot of the advantage that the skilled players have if it becomes if it comes down to getting to resolving and winning with a bomb um so to get to uh, uh, brian david marshall bdm was a guest on limited resources many years ago and introduced the concept to me at least of uh what he called the the defining formats identifying formats as a popper format or a prince format where a popper format is about high synergy between commons and uncommons and of course it's gonna, every set is going to have impactful rares and mythics but can can you imagine a deck in a format that only has commons and uncommons being really good like it and if you can describe a format where you're like, oh yeah, I could totally make a busted deck out of commons and uncommons, it's probably a, a more of a popper format because the synergy at low, low rarity is where it's about. Prince formats are ones where the going concern is the power level of your rares and mythics. And in this, in this case, in, in a, it's very princely. Dominaria was like this as well, where it gets princely when rare power level drops down to uncommon as well, which you have a lot in this set also. So if it's going to be a format about power level of cards and grinding out to them, I got, I got to buckle my seatbelt and be ready for the variants. I mean, we've had some variants issues so far on the stream, just as a matter of course, it's been we've had pretty rough mana luck so far, but that's neither here nor there. Like whatever we will that, but uh, I'm just trying to figure out what my current take on the format means about how we should approach our draft coming up here. Because if it is, it, you know, I, I both want to see if there's an aggro f deck that can control this. Because if you're in a world where the game goes long and you get to your bombs and the bombs decide it. One way to counter that is to just get underneath that with aggro and just aggro out the deck with the superior bombs and kill them dead before that stuff matters. But I haven't seen that yet. So uh, that's why I was asking about that. Anyway, that's what's been on my mind about the format. Um, is the combination of grindy princely going to make uh, kind of a more of a coin flippy format that we really have to uh, get ready beef up our variance tolerance to make it out with our sanity? Or uh, is there some aggro valves that we can pursue that give an alternate way to approach the format? So uh, that's where I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. And we'll take that to take those thoughts into the draft here. And hello, everybody. Hey, Queen. Also, uh, give a quick check on chat here since I was rambly. A little black red with some haste creatures, but nothing like RNA, says Turtle Power regarding aggro. Short West says, always ended up siding out. My two drops for more power. Yeah. The most I have seen is aggressive mid-range, says Hard Event. So, uh, Nasty uh, one uh, Hour 10 says, uh, Nasty Gruel aggro deck go 3-2. That's solid. We always love our, our buy-in back. Went against a Dreadhorde Invasion red-black aggro. One turn four and six with a red-white deck. 
But Val Hollis agrees that inevitability seems uh, seems like the name of the game. But Fiddles is also saying uh, green, black, aggro. Interesting. I've seen, I guess with that much, black has so much removal, it can do whatever you want if you can either clear the way or hold the fort, you know? Greg says green, white is good, but if you miss your two drop, you lose. And the decent two drops are few and far between. That reflects my feelings. Uh, so Deathlos has played a face uh, against uh, aggro Boros and mono back aggro. So there's some aggro out there. Anyway, we're going to... Yeah, Trollbinus says, I think that it's princely, but that there's an underlying issue of Planeswalkers disrupting almost every heuristic that skilled limited players have. But, I, but it's a zero-sum game, right? So if you're saying the skilled players are taking losses because of the underlying issue of Planeswalkers disrupting heuristics, <clears throat> why would that not be even worse for lesser players, right? Like, I don't understand where those wins you're taking away from uh, skilled players due to that are going. I just heard the Furnace Dragon go on. I did not turn down my heat. So I'm going to go... Uh, after I get out of this mode, I'll go turn that off so we don't have a... Humming Furnace throughout the stream here today. Uh, Double D's asks what this impact is on uh, uh, rare drafting. I think I have the opposite reaction. If this is about, if this format is all just about bomby rares and getting to them, then I think it's probably more prudent to rare draft heavily, right? The, the, that your uh, one pick here and there isn't going to affect your draft much at all. It's about who opened a lily or whatever, right? So if it's all about just who opened a huge thing, then I would say it'd be more prudent to, to draft more heavily in favor of rares. Okay. That's enough of that. I'm going to switch to draft view, go turn off the Furnace Dragon, get a first pick up, and then we'll get going. I want to thank my sponsor, Card Kingdom, as well for supporting my stream. And if you have any magic needs, they've got you covered. They're among the best in the business at basically every axis. So whenever you need to make a magic purchase, you should really be putting Card Kingdom on your radar because they will do right by you.